And welcome back to Sunday Square Off on our special Arizona author show. Jen McKinley's written more than 40 books. She's a New York Times best-selling author, but her best story might be how she got there over the course of 20 years of hard work. Here are just a few of those books, all fit into specific genres, rom-coms aimed at a female audience under the label of Bluff Point Romance, and mysteries. Those labels are a library lover's mystery and a cupcake bakery mystery. Those mysteries, the last set, are set here in Arizona. They are entertaining, well-crafted books by author Jen McKinley and Great Reads. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, full disclosure, as I often do, you work with my wife at the Phoenix Public Library downtown, Burton Bar, right? I did. I did many years ago. Many years ago. So that's how I. That's how exactly how I came to know you mm -hmm. and your stuff. My wife raves about it, and my wife is never wrong, right, no, honey? Never, never. Mm -hmm. uh, never wrong. So you've always wanted to be a writer. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Tell us about the start and what you thought that life was going to be like. Oh, wow, the start. Okay. Um, I am the youngest in my family. And when I was a kid, I found my mom's portable typewriter. And I'm also a candy freak. So I started writing my own newspaper, ratting out all my siblings. And I would charge her 25 cents. <laughs> so that's when I started writing, technically. Technically. So this goes way back. Way back. Okay, then reality hits. You go to college? I did. I and you want to yeah. do this for real? You want to make yeah, money doing I this? Yeah, I think and somewhere around my teen years, the writing thing as an occupation kicked in. And so you tried. You went to New York, moved to New York? Did nope, I, think? I was no, in just Connecticut. I'll stay at home. Yeah, yeah. So what did you start writing? What was, your, what was the first book you tried to sell? Oh, wow. Well, I did that thing where I thought romance was easy because I'd seen the movie. <laughs> I'd seen the movie Romancing the Stone, and it was the first time I ever saw an employed author, you know, on the big screen, and it occurred to me, oh, this is a job. And I was a book nerd, and I loved books. So I thought, that's what I want to do. Of course, it was Kathleen Turner, Sweet Department in New York. Why wouldn't I want this? So I started writing. And so I started writing really bad romances, really bad. But I eventually did sell a few. And you got a job with Harlequin. I did. Was, yeah. I did. I did. And I wrote for one line of theirs that was romantic comedy. And that line failed. And then I wrote for another line. And that line failed. And then I wrote for another line. And that line failed. And so they fired me. So you're the line killer. Pretty much. The line killer. But wh where does that come from, romantic comedy? Why romantic comedy as opposed to just straight romance? I think I, everything I do is comedy because I am a Gen X kid, latchkey kid, and I was pretty much raised after school by Bewitched, I Dream of Genie, The Monkees, so I can't have a problem that lasts more than 22 and a half minutes because my coping skills give out. So I think comedy was just its how I learned how to cope with everything. So you didn't stop after those Harlequin lo lines no. disappeared. You kept going, and I think what you told me, you got through, through a, kind of a back door? I yeah. did. My husband said, why don't you write a mystery? Because you love mysteries, you've always wanted to write a mystery, go for it. And here's your window. So I said, okay. And I started writing mysteries, and I wasn't having much success, but I did get an agent out of my endless submissions. And so she liked my voice, and then she had a good relationship with Penguin, and then they came to her and said, okay, we have um, a series that we would like somebody to write. We th think Jen might fit, and I think it's mostly because I badgered them into, you know, hiring me. And it was about um, decoupage. Which decoupage, <laughs> which is a word most people can't define, <laughs> including me. Right, and they said, do you know what that is? And I said, sure. And then I ran to work at the library and looked it up. And then I was like, oh, I've got this. I've got this. So what is it? Okay. I'd actually done decoupage and didn't know it because my son was having a little tiff with his dad and we had this beautiful end table and my son wrote, I hat dad. I hat dad. I hat dad in permanent marker. So I cut out a picture and I glued it on and I slacked over it. That's decoupage. That's decoupage. Now all this time you're working. Yes, part time. At least part time mm -hmm. and writing. Mm -hmm. And raising. And raising children. Hooligans, yes. And this is happening over the course of several years. Yes. It took many years. Many years. Many years. Be Harlequin, my last book published with them, I was in my mid-30s, and I didn't sell my first mystery or sign on for this offer from the publisher until I was almost 40. So it was a good five-year dry spell. <laughs> wow. That's a haul. Yeah. But you stuck with it. And well, the writer for hire thing, it's when the publisher 
comes to you and says, we have an idea, will you write it? They keep the copyright, but you get to write the books. And I jumped on it because I thought, this is my backdoor entry into publishing. And as soon as I signed that contract, I started just churning up more ideas. So it was cupcakes and libraries in London. And, and then when mysteries looked dicey, it was like, okay, what else can I do? And, you know. Okay, we're going to talk about that when <sighs> we come back. More with Jen McKinley, advice for authors. And does she have that great American novel waiting to be written? Stay with us.